Justin have been traveling how many countries, Justin? Check, check. Um, this year, uh, like tomorrow, I'm going to Australia for two weeks, to Australia and New Zealand. Uh, right after that, I come home and I go to Ireland. Next week, I go to Brazil, then to America, then I go to Ireland, then I come home, then I go back to Ireland, then I go to Ibiza, then I go. It's pretty crazy right now. Ibiza. Lots of trips. That sounds good to me. That sounds like vacation. That would be vacation. That's uh, spring needed. vacation. Yeah, yeah, good. But it's fun right now. It's very interesting to travel. I mean, it just shows you how big the industry is getting. Is that if there's a need for someone to travel, it's good stuff. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we're both traveling pretty much. I don't know, are you, you know, you're picking up a lot of tricks every time, right? Exactly. So, yeah, so the tricks we are sharing here, some of them is, is from us, but a lot of them is just tricks picking up from guys around the world yep. and maybe develop them a little. Is that right? 100%. I mean, I think it's, it's no different than, if you notice that in the contest, a lot of the guys who are competing are watching what the other guys are doing, seeing what tools they're using, how they're approaching this thing. So everyone's learning and picking up and stealing little chips and tricks. And it's all about kind of taking what you, what someone else is doing and maybe making it a little better. Yeah. So again, for me, that's the name of the game. And I think the internet is really making a big difference right now of checking Facegram or uh, Facebook or Instagram. You can really see what other people are doing. It's an exciting time. I think the quality is going up very quickly. It is, it is, yeah. Absolutely, see, you can same. see it in the contest. Oh yeah, the contest have been awesome. This, the, especially now, today, we see a some kind of difference between the European and now the world guys. 100%. I mean, the contest this morning, just the quality level, if yesterday was, let's say, a 7, today was a 10. Total okay. different ballgame. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Good. Okay, Justin, why not? It's not here yet, but you know what? Well, we don't want to wait do, anymore. It'd be good to do live, though. Why don't we wait until we can go live? We that's cool? Yeah. Okay. So, Justin, tell me, what do you want to show me as the first thing today? Uh, well, today we're going to talk about what's called triangles, and we're going to do what's called a cold pre-stretch. So we're, right now we're talking, this is the world championship, about techniques and stuff from different areas of the world, right? So, you know, we're taking it, we're going to show a technique that was invented in America, but then also invented in uh, Germany and also Japan, okay? So for me, it's really interesting because for me, what's interesting about wrapping cars, all right, is wrapping walls are easy. Walls are flat, okay? Mm -hmm. But for me, uh, cars are hard because they have curves, corners, and recessed areas, okay? So for me, I teach a lot of workshops, and I tell people, if I could press a button and make the car flat for four, four hours and wrap it and then press it again and it turns back into an Audi, cool, Dream right? scenario. So but what I teach is I actually came up with a technique that makes the car flat, all right? And that's what I want to show in the first demonstration. I'm going to show a technique that I call triangles, and it's something I discovered in 1997 in New York City. And it really took me from wrapping a car in 10 hours to a full print car in like three or four, all right? Wow. And first off, my daughter is home at sick today, so I know she's watching right now, so I just want to say hi, Tiger Lily, hi, Bircha, my wife. So I hope you feel better. Um, so basically, what I want to do is I'm going to wrap this hood, all right? And for me, wrapping cars is all about money. As cool as it is to wrap a car, I also want to make money. So if I can wrap the car by myself, as opposed to with someone else, I get all the profits. And so triangles allows me to do that. That means... You do not need any help from me. No, you, you can go have lunch. You, <laughs> Justin, it's all yours. And that's what it's all about, Ole having lunch, okay? So what I want to do right now is really, just before I unroll this really quick, is kind of show you what, what is hard about wrapping this hood, just okay? If I look at this hood right now, okay, it's relatively flat, but once I put the material on it, you're gonna see it bunch up right at the corners, okay? And I'm gonna show how to neutralize that instead of using a heat gun and stretching the material, I'm gonna use the shape of a triangle to really get it down nice and easy. So here I'm gonna take this down. This is Avery Supreme wrapping film. But I want you to understand is this technique that I'm gonna show you works with any type of material. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place it on here and I'm gonna use these magnets. Magnets are really nice for kind of holding the material onto the vehicle as you place it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, make sure it fits at the top, okay? Swing behind the camera guy in front of Ole. Come back over here and just make sure that it has enough, okay? This I don't have to make necessarily centered or straight because it's just one color. Then to cut the material away, because I always like to cut the material and make it a little less, I'm going to come through here with what's called a snitty. And I never use my knife when I'm working on a car, okay? I'm going to pull it across here and then come all the way across. And I always keep my backy paper on. The reason why I keep my backy paper on is later I'm going to show how to do the door handle here. I'm going to use it with this. So I hand it to my lovely assistant. And then I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to cut a little bit off the top here. And again, what's great about this tool, 
is the blade is inside the plastic. And if I'm working on this is a brand new Audi, I could use my knife right now, but I could cut the car, which is not something I want to do. So I take the material here, and again, I hand it to my lovely assistant. All right. So normally, what I would do here is I would take the, the, the magnets and flip the panel over, cut the backing paper, and start again. But I'm always thinking about dirt. right? So for me, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the magnet and stick it over here on the fender, and I'm going to start up here. So I'm going to pick it up, and I'm going to release the backing paper. And I'm going to pull the backing paper underneath the material. Because again, we're in a sign show. There's lots of carpet fibers. There's lots of dust and dirt because just lots of people walking around. I want to minimize that as much as possible. So once I get it set up here, pull the magnet away. And then I continue to take the backing paper off. Slide it all the way out. And I'm done. So I hand it again to Ole. So all I want to do right now is just let the material relax. And again, I'll talk about triangles and the material. So I'm just going to lay it flat, lay it to here. And this is what I, you know, I moved to Amsterdam about eight years ago, a little over eight years ago. And I learned how to speak Dutch, or I'm learning how to speak Dutch. Not quite there, but I'm getting there. And as a rapper, when I'm teaching a beginning class, I tell people, you're learning how to speak wrinkle, right? Right now, the material has wrinkles. So I'm looking at the material, and right in the middle where it's flat, as if it's a wall, it's easy. There's no tension there. But when I get to the corners, look at the corners on the side and the top. The corners, material loves corners, right? All the material is graduating to these, gra uh, gravitating to here, and those are the hot spots, OK? So for me, how I used to wrap is I would create a hinge, and I'd wrap the hood like a square. But that meant that these are hard to wrap, so I take my heat gun and stretch. But one day, I discovered triangles, and that changed the game for me. So on the easiest spot to wrap, I take my squeegee now, OK? And I pick the material up, and I squeegee right there, and that's it. All right, so I'll mark it here with my pen. So right there is a water-soluble pen. So basically, I set up a hinge. But what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to divide the hood into three or four triangles. I have a triangle here, 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 and here. Okay, so I'm going to do four giant triangles for right now. So all I do here is I come to the upper corner here, and I'm going to pick the material up. Okay, and again, this material is repositionable. I pick it up and I pull, and I create what I call glass. Once I get to here, I tack it. And right here, I have no wrinkles, because I spread the material out this way so it doesn't bunch up here. Then I come back down here, and I'm going to do the exact same. Okay. So here, though, I notice that the material got a little jacked up right there. Right? So can I fix that? No. So I need to bring the material down just a little bit there to make it play. All right? I can maybe self-heal it if I had a heat gun, which I'm going to grab here. And maybe it'll come out. So we'll see. And it does. So now it fixed itself. So now I don't have to pick up the whole hood again. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull to this corner. OK? And now I have glass to here. Right? So then I'm going to do the same on the other corners. And notice that other than the one squeegee mark in the middle, I haven't squeegeed yet. Come back over here. And again, I'm pulling. Look how firm I'm pulling. I'm pulling really, really hard. I pick it up and I pull. And I lock it in, and all I'm looking for is no wrinkles. Then I come behind the cameraman, and I'm going to do it one more time. So I pick it up. And from here, watch, I'm going to pull, and I'm pulling really hard. And now I have glass. So it, this hood is quickly becoming like a wall. All right? right here at the front, the material is coming to here, so I'm going to make another triangle where I'm going to pull to the right and pull to the left. And now it's flat. I pull here, tuck it, and then here I see some more wrinkles. So all I'm going to do here is pull, and then I read the wrinkles right now. Okay? If I look at the, the hood right now, where are my wrinkles? Are they here or are they here? I found that if I work too here, I'm feeding the material more wrinkles, more tension. If I pull it this way in the shape of a triangle, watch. I'm going to pull to the left, but right here, see how I'm getting tension right there. I'm not wrapping this, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a relief cut. And just by making a relief cut, I swing it around with no tension. And then here, you can see the angles in the camera right here. The angles are pulling here, and that tells me where to pull the material. If I pull the material to the left and cold, when I get to the front, the front which had all the wrinkles, they disappear.
Okay? And I still haven't squeegeed yet. Really cool. So I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. I read the wrinkles, pick it up, come over here. I see that I'm getting tension. I make a relief cut. Ole backs up so we don't get any feedback. Okay? And once I, once I tack it here, okay, I make sure that I'm with glass here and watch. I do the exact same thing. I pick it up and I pull. And by doing this, what I'm not getting is what's called adhesive lines. And that's really common with the film today, is that the material really gets these crazy adhesive lines if I squeegee and pull at the same time. And now I got one more here. I hope you can appreciate it right there. This is where I see a triangle. And I'll actually I'll draw it right now. Right here, this is what I'm seeing. Okay? If I work the material into the middle, I get wrinkles. Okay? But if I simply pull it up and I pull to the right, and I pull to the left, it disappears. Okay? And I'm doing this without heat. I hope you guys can appreciate that. Because by doing it without heat, it looks still good. No distortion, no anything. And now is it like a wall? Absolutely. Now it's literally this easy to squeegee. Okay? I even did a video recently. I have a video streaming platform called the Rap Institute. And someone said, I said, once you wrap a hood or get a, like a door or anything on a car with 100% glass, you can wrap it with your eyes closed. And they said, I dare you. So what I did is I made a video of me wrapping okay, a car with my eyes closed. And right here I have a little wrinkle. I didn't have 100% glass, but what I could do is I can take my fingernail and get that material out. Sometimes your fingernail is the best squeegee you got. And I get the material to here, okay? And I see that the air is starting to come up. So I'm just going to poke it up here. And then I come back down and again, just squeezing the material on. And again, this material has what's called air egress features. So it's letting the air escape. So I get it right to here, work it up here. And right here, I have a slight recessed area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach in, grab my application glove, and it's just a small little piece here. So I'm just going to run it and push it in right into that little section right there. Work it out the back, set it up here nice and clean. And then I continue on because I have 100% glass. And look how easily I can squeegee the material now. So for me, I'm a huge fan of this because the material goes down so easy today that this allows me to use triangles. So again, have you heard me pick up a heat gun yet? OK. Because I haven't picked up a heat gun yet, that tells me I haven't overstretched the material. A lot of you, if you look at uh, any kind of wrap on the road today, whether it's a car or a motorcycle, sometimes you see what's called fingering, or the material's lifting out of a recessed area. That's because the material was overstretched. So as an installer, if you notice the guys in the competition right now, what they're doing is they're really relaxing the material on the car. They don't stretch it. They don't heat it. They don't pull it around. They're really using a lot of technique, and that's mainly because they want to keep the material from overstretching. That's a big one for long-term durability. But again, I'm just working nice and smooth. And again, this technique for me really fueled, as an installer, it really changed for me how I wrapped. Because it enabled me to wrap fast with no stress, which is big. I don't like stress. But now when I teach workshops, you know, I just got an email today from someone saying who took the workshop that my workshop reduced his install time literally by 100%. He was wrapping cars in 16 hours, and now he wraps them in eight. And for me, it's all about triangles. Right here, even on the tricky section right here, I can squeegee the material down nice and straightforward, and I'm done. That easy, OK? And then I just cut everything out. Very straightforward. So again, I hope you understand and see how, what I saw. I saw a giant plus sign because I'm a positive, positive person, all right? And I separated into four big triangles here, okay, or here, sorry. And then what I did is when I got into tricky areas where the hot spots were, I used another set of triangles where I pulled the material this way so that this went flat. Make sense? Same thing at the front. Where I bunched up here, I used the shape of a triangle to pull the tension this way. Okay? And again, by not having to use a heat gun, I know that this is going to stay for sure for three years, which is a big one. All right? So from this logic, though, what I want to do is come to the side of this door right now. So if you guys want to turn your attention, let me jump on this door right here. Is that for me, one of the hardest things to wrap on a car is a door handle. All right? And again, what I'm doing right now, we're going to talk tomorrow, Ole and I, with John Duver, about saving material. Okay? This for me is money. 
All right, I could have taken these scraps and thrown them in the trash, but for me now, I can wrap the door handle with a scrap, which for me makes money. I'm not going to go to the roll and cut a new piece. All right? So now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show how to wrap the door handle incorrectly, which I th think is important to know. Now again, the reason why the material fails on a door handle is right now, this is the flat part, no different than what I showed you on the hood. This is like a wall. The reason, the re where material gets tricky to wrap is on the corners, okay, and on the back recessed areas, all right? So what I see a lot of people do, and I, again, I, the only reason I know how to wrap a car is because I made a lot of mistakes. But I also paid a lot of attention and I learned from other people. So how I used to wrap a car is I get the material to here and I'd grab a heat gun and I would heat the material a lot. So I'd crank it up, heat it, and I'd stretch it. And if you stretch the material, okay, and I might show a demonstration on the window right now, is if I heat it and stretch it, it does look good. And I always say in my workshops, anyone can wrap a car that looks good for a day, okay? The art of car wrapping is having it look good for three years as opposed to one day. So right now I heated it, I stretch it in, I'm treating it as if it's like bubble gum. It's not quite like bubble gum. So I heat it, stretch it again, all right? And I dig it in nice and clean, okay? And let's just focus on the front part of the door handle right now. We won't talk about the back. But once I get it in here, nice and clean, I'm gonna cut it out. Try not to hit the camera, okay? Very short blade, get my knife right to the edge. And slow down on the corner come off the top, and then I'm going to come across the back section here. Very straightforward, all right? So now for the most part, the door handle looks okay for now. But if it goes outside and within a day, I'm going to heat it now, and you're going to see what's going to happen in a couple days is the material is going to start to get what's called fingering, all right? You see it at the top right here, all right? And at the bottom, I'm going to get my flashlight so you guys can see it. Right here at the bottom is exactly what I'm talking about, okay? This is overstretching. The material likes to be stretched up to about 10%. And then when you go beyond 10%, it creates these fingers, which happen because it, the adhesive can't hold it because the material likes to shrink, all right? And I don't think a lot of you have seen this, so I'm actually gonna do this on the window right now. I'm actually gonna put this piece inside. And Ole, if I can grab a square, perfect, okay? I don't know if this is big enough, do you think? It is. I'm going to put it, well, can I get a bigger square? I'll cut it. So what I want to show is why the material fails, why it has this, what's called memory, all right? Most film today on the market has what's called PVC, all right? So if I lock it into the window right here, what I'm going to do is heat it and stretch it, all right? And why they put PVC into the film is because it makes it stretch, makes it conform. So I'm going to heat it up a lot, and you can see the material, once it gets hot, it creates what's called glass. Kind of all those wrinkles flatten out and it becomes nice and wavy. So I wave it up here. And once it gets hot, okay, I'm then gonna take my hand and I'm gonna stretch it, okay? And this allows me to wrap cars because the material can stretch. If it couldn't, my hand would go right through, all right? So once I have the material to there though, okay, what you saw on the door handle is this, is what's called memory, all right? I'm gonna take the heat gun now and watch. I heat the material again and watch what happens to it. The material literally goes back to its original shape and tension. That's called memory. It knows its original shape and tension. So I'm gonna heat it here and eventually those wrinkles will flatten out. And this is gonna cool and you're gonna see all that go back flat. You can see it already starting to come back from the top and bottom. Okay, this is why material, if you overstretch it, it's gonna fail, all right? So when I was in Japan in May, okay, I was teaching a master certification program for Avery Dennison and there's eight top installers from Japan. And there's a guy named Koji Yamaguchi, installer, and I saw him wrap a door handle and I had a giant light bulb that went off. Because what he did was, was called cold pre-stretch, okay? Back in eight years ago in Germany, they came up with a technique called pre-stretch, where they heated the material a lot, stretched it about 50%, if you put it on a mirror and get it close to the edge and heat it, it shrinks back to the mirror. So you're almost like shrink wrapping a car. Genius technique, but it only worked with gloss and maybe matte film, okay? Then I taught a workshop in Japan two years ago and I, saw, I showed Koji my triangle technique, which he liked. And before that, he had taken a workshop with Hexus who showed him pre-stretch. 
So last year I came back and this is what he showed me, okay? So I'm going to come back to the door handle and I'm going to, my lovely assistant's going to hand me a piece right here and here, okay? So what Koji did, okay, which was for me just absolutely genius, is that the hardest part of the door handle is right here at the front, okay? So what Koji did is instead of starting on the flat and working to the hardest part, he actually started at the hardest part, all right? But if, instead of, if he adds heat and pulls, it's going to overstretch. So what Koji did was this, okay? Is he took a piece that's roughly the size of the handle that actually can fold behind in one piece and overlaps, so he doesn't have to cut behind the handle, okay? And then what he did is he's going to start here. I'm going to draw on the car here. And he's going to use the triangle technique that I have. He's going to pull it here, which will neutralize this area. But by pulling and stretching it, he's going to stretch the material like around 4%. And when he gets to the edges, he's going to heat it and make it go back to 0%, if that makes sense. And you're going to see it right now. So I'm going to come over here, take the material now, take the backing paper off. And right here, I'm going to take the material and actually hook it right behind the front of the door handle, right there. And I'm going to stop. So the hardest part of the door handle, I just wrapped with no stretch. Awesome. Then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to get down low and I'm going to pull the material very firmly towards the back. All right? And by pulling it hard, what I've done is I've stretched the material, okay? And I'm going to pick it back up to here, right to there, okay? And I'm going to let the material just kind of get to the edge, okay? So notice that I'm already at the front part of the edge right here. I don't see any tension right there at all. So I'm going to pick it back up to here, tuck it back down. And notice how the material literally almost just shrinks back to the mirror by itself, all right? But before I cut it, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my heat gun, watch, and I'm going to, what you saw in the window is what I'm going to do now just to the edge. And it's a subtle thing, but watch. I'm going to heat it, and I'm going to heat it. And if you look really close on camera, it shrank back about two millimeters. And that's all I want because now, once the material cools, I'm going to pick it up, tuck it in with the hard part of my squeegee right there, right there, and right there, okay? And again, as an installer, before you cut, you always look for what's called glass, what I mentioned earlier. So if I look on the edges now, right here, I don't see any tension on the edge. Same thing on the bottom. So all I do is get my knife here, and I'm going to cut flush to the base of the door handle right there, tuck it in, all right? And then I'm just going to come around very slowly on the front of the door handle. Again, you never want your knife to jump off. And I cut here, very straightforward. And then I'm going to cut all the way down at the bottom, all right? And I'm doing exactly what I did before, cut it away, have everything set up. And now watch what happens when I heat it with a heat gun, OK? You're going to see nothing, which is what I want. If I heat it, I get no fingering at all right there, OK? So I'll get my phone again right here. Let me grab my phone. Under here, I have no wrinkles. And at the top, I have no wrinkles. So I'm heating, 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 and nothing's jumping, OK? So A, it's a quicker way of wrapping a door handle. And B, it stays, all right? So for me, when I wrap door handles now, I start at the hardest part, and I pull away, heat it, shrinks back, done, all right? So what Koji did, what's interesting now about wrapping today is that people are taking techniques from all across the world and really mixing them, all right? So Koji took something from Japan, took something from America, and made it Japanese, all right? So how would this work on the hood? Why don't we go back to the hood over here, OK? So I'm still using cold pre-stretch, OK, uh, everywhere, OK? I had talked about on the corners. In the competition right now, uh, guys are, the, I mean, the, the points are really close, OK? So sometimes the difference between someone going to the next round and not is simply having wrinkles on the corners, all right? So on the corners, because I stretched the film, I did stretch the film a lot. Right now on the corner, all I do is I pick it up right here and watch. I'm just going to heat it and not pull. And by heating and not pulling, right now, do you see how loose the material is? That means there's no tension on the corner, which is the hardest part to wrap. So all I do now is I run my finger here, and now it's on that corner with no tension, and then I cut. It's a brilliant technique. So on this hood, all I do is I pick the material up, get it relaxed, Kiss it with heat, let it shrink back, touch the corner, and now I got a perfect corner. All right? So I use cold pre stretch on corners, on door handles, on mirrors. I use this on mirrors all the time, and now my mirrors are ace. Really cool technique. So, again, I hope you enjoyed this. And again, 
just so for you, those of you watching at home, I'll write it right here. Uh, I have a website called the, the RAP Institute. And so right now, if you go to the RAP Institute, you can plug in this coupon code, OK? And you get 50% off a of membership, OK? So plug in TWI FESPA, one word, capital letters. And again, this is a streaming video platform where I, right now I have over 600 videos at over 82 hours on everything from coffins and walls and windows, but mainly cars. Because for me, cars are the hardest part to wrap, but also the most profitable as well. So does anyone have any questions right now? Justin, I want to. I want to know, can you, can you please um, finish this one? Just make some nice uh, cuts here. We, we made it yesterday, but just sure. to finish this one, okay. show maybe you have some new tools. You can show how to work it around exactly. the edges, please. OK. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set the material up on the corner, and then I run my finger along this edge, for example. OK. So what I want to do is, before I squeegee, I always create glass as well, all right? So right now, because I pull, there is some tension there, but I'm not going to pull when I, when I heat. Watch. I'm just going to take my heat gun. And I liken this to like in the workshops. I tell people, like, when you get home from work, you know, you take a hot shower, you chill out. Right now, I just heated the film up, and it relaxed. And now I have glass. This is then when I run my finger to get it set up. OK? And then once I do that, I'm going to come back to the corner right here. And then I'm going to make my cut. And again, I'm using a plastic knife. And look how I'm angling my blade away from the corner. OK, this is a great blade from Japan, from NT Cutter. And so I'm actually pushing against the edge as I cut. So let's say I stop here, all right? And then I'm going to cut the material away. And before I start here, I don't want to work to the corner. I want to work from the corner. So I work away, OK? And then I'm going to come up with a really cool technique. And what Oli does really well is he comes up with really inventive tools, OK? So this is a really good hook. So instead of me picking up the hood of the car right now, I can stick it inside here, and I can run it on the edge. And this saves me from having to come around to the driver's side and pick up the hood. So by doing that, I can tuck it in nice and clean. And that's what I would do around the whole side of the car. So again, having different styles of tools, like this is a monkey strip, very popular felt buffer, great knife, great tools like this. And again, magnets when I need them. So again, having lots of tools and tricks is definitely the key. So right after this demo, we're not going to talk about it, but we're, notice on the front of the cars right now, we have chrome that has a translucent color on it. What we're going to do is I'm with Kiss and John. We're just going to wrap the front of this hood with chrome, and then we're going to get to the competition. So I appreciate all of you watching, and say hi to Tiger Lily and Bircha again. Hi. And uh, thank you for this time. And tomorrow, we'll talk about pricing and how to make money. Because it was one thing to wrap a car, but it's another thing to make money, which is very important. Super, Justin. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's always a privilege to see the way you teach people. Yeah. It looks so simple. It is. And it is actually so simple. Please go back home. Try it. Try Justin's super nice technique. It works perfectly. Yeah, it's great. Thank you. So thank you so much. We'll be back tomorrow with and a little workshop. And at 12.45 is the second round. So if you want to watch actual car wrapping in the contest, 12.45 is when it begins. So thank you all. Have a great lunch. Thank Bye. you, Justin. Thank Cheers. you. Thank you, dude. Thank you.